Did you know that China has been involved in quite a number of projects in African countries? Africa is one of the underdeveloped continents. China has been actively involved in building projects worth $1,000 in different countries. China is presently involved in infrastructure projects in 35 African countries. A concentration of projects is to be found in Angola, Nigeria, and Sudan. However, China is planning a new range of projects in other countries, especially in the African countries. China has supported so many projects and these activities have been divided fairly evenly among two main sectors – power generation, especially hydropower, and transport, especially railroads, followed by the ICT sector, mainly equipment supply and water projects. These projects are worth more than $1,000. There are a lot of questions running through your mind like, why is China always assisting African countries? Stay tuned, focus and follow us even as we take you on a ride out of this world. So in this video, we will be highlighting four biggest projects you never knew worth $1,000 that China has built in African countries, from Nigeria to Djibouti to Rwanda and to the Congo. Before we get started, kindly like, subscribe, share and comment in our videos. The first project will blow your mind off this world. Grab a seat and get focused. Project 1. China built a $12 billion mega railway project in Nigeria. China is constructing a $12 billion coastal railway project for Nigeria with a total length of 2,733 kilometers that would traverse across 10 Nigerian states, including the whole Niger Delta. The oil producing area, but the construction of the railway enhanced Nigeria's economic development, making it the greatest economy. Because the loan to China has not yet been returned, several African countries perceive Nigeria as the start of a vicious debt cycle. But is this perspective accurate? If you want to truly understand why Nigeria is ready to risk borrowing money to build railways, you must look back in time. The railway network in several nations in China and Europe is adequately developed. If you want to travel abroad, you can use the train. However, large-scale railroad networks do not exist in Africa and the continent's transportation infrastructure is still extremely poor. Nigeria, Africa's most populous country with a population of about 200 million people. Nigeria was colonized by the British at the end of the 19th century. Nigeria's infrastructure was no worse than China's at the time, even in the early 1960s when China was still struggling with food and clothing. Nigeria's railways had reached 355 kilometers, but with independence following freedom, Nigeria did not have the support of the United Kingdom. Infrastructure facilities were steadily falling behind, and the original railway was also showing signs of wear. Many local trains were broken down and paralyzed at the start of the 21st century, and the death toll from traffic accidents was as high as 80,000 in only three years. Not only has the number of visitors and extremely high regions fallen significantly, but even transit of commodities between cities has been hampered. The government expected that obtaining oil would benefit the economy, but transporting the produced oil was necessary. Bottlenecks in Nigeria's economic growth have emerged from transportation development paired with agriculture under development. Many families had run out of food and were welcomed with open arms. Despite a shortage of railway-related technology, the government believes it is time to follow China's lead and expand its railway network in order to boost Nigeria's economy. It is clearly a pipe dream to build it on their own. Therefore, they intend to partner with China. In 2014, the China-African Cooperation Conference was held in Beijing, China. Nigeria and China signed a cooperation agreement as well as a $12 billion standard gauge railway project contract. Nigeria pledged to provide China development rights to a local mineral resource. China has offered to cover 70% of Nigeria's project funding. The railway lines are built to Chinese standards and China will aid in the free building of roads and schools, as well as sending 300 agricultural professionals to help with agricultural development and teaching agricultural methods to market food concerns. The Nigerian government made a sensible move, but it was questioned by several nations, who believed that China was aiming to dominate Nigeria's economy at the time. Some environmentalists objected, arguing that the railway's development would hurt the environment and imperil the existence of wild animals and that Nigeria should terminate its engagement with China. Finally, despite criticism and reservations from all walks of life, the Nigerian government illustrates how to continue working with China. They believe that collaboration with China would not suffer because it is not the first time Africa has partnered with China. 
China is more responsible and trustworthy than America's ambition. It is highly simple to connect with China because you don't have to balance the interests of many stakeholders in the face of several hurdles and problems such as the complex construction time, construction environment, and limited construction resources. Then yes, Chinese laborers survived the terrible living conditions in Nigeria and completed the project in the shortest amount of time possible within five years. The world was stunned by China's quickness. In addition, China has offered over 40,000 direct and 150 indirect job opportunities in Nigeria through this initiative. Chinese enterprises employ 30,000 locals, which is critical right now. Many nations, including Nigeria, are regarded as unable to do so by teaching them in professional railway building technology. China says that the rail line company would repair the railway for free in Nigeria within five years. And that if Nigeria has specialists who can maintain the railway, China's maintenance technology will be passed to the Nigerian railway firm. The constructed railway has brought about seismic upheavals in Nigeria. The old lines erected by British colonies in the past are deteriorating, and China has assisted them in free repairs. Nigeria is undergoing a railway renaissance, with a new railway running from Lagos via safari parks, deserts, and coastal locations. Nigeria's economic hub, stretching from Lagos in the west to Calabar in the east. It runs through the whole Niger Delta oil producing area and includes 10 states along the coasts of Lagos, Delta, and Cross River states. The railway's design speed is 120 km per hour, which is slower than the Chinese subway's 160 km of Nigerians. Nigeria's economic growth and people's lifestyles have been stifled as a result of outdated transportation. People have no trains to rely on, and the congestion of road infrastructure for three or four hours has severely inhibited city economic progress in the past. Now, railways can travel through 10 regions. In the past, it took people 10 hours to get to another city. People may now travel freely between cities in two hours, and industrially created goods and extracted oil can be sent in and out quickly. The railway has significantly improved the Nigerian people's traffic situation while also opening up the key artery of Nigeria's economic development. At the same time, Nigeria's difficulty was solved and local citizens' economic lives improved. Nigeria may maintain its annual growth rate of 70% and become Africa's largest economy. Unsurprisingly, the railway is challenging to turn a profit, despite the fact that income is still less than the cost of construction and the railway's debt to China remains unpaid. This is perceived as a vicious circle of debt in some nations, but the difficulty is that without this train, there's no means to produce money from products or passengers, and the country's economy would not break through at the railway's opening ceremony. Nigerian chief Bill Hurry stated that the railway has been heavily questioned and condemned, but that it's now a reality since the economy had stalled before China arrived. It may be a hazardous wager, but Nigeria needs such a wager in order to change the status quo. This railway will provide a new commercial prospects and prosperity to their country. In reality, collaboration and railway building between China and Nigeria and even the entire continent of Africa interprets the essence of peaceful growth. China and Africa now have a lot of trade cooperation to promote each other. There is economic progress and now greater infrastructure collaboration. The debt trap element is quite concerning, but China's massive train network is very appealing. It is nearly hard to generate money the first few years of an infrastructure project and waiting too long would simply lead to larger costs in the future, rendering the project financially untenable. But don't forget that as an infrastructure, most of its advantages extend beyond what it is. And in the next 10 years, some of these tracks will also be lucrative, with China serving as an example. People often claim it's a death trap, but as an infrastructure, if it develops healthily and makes people's lives happier and more convenient, it's a terrific endeavor. More than 30% of China's investment in Africa is now in the construction business, which includes Chinese-made roads, trains, schools, hospitals, and power plants. Throughout Africa, China boasts numerous notable engineering feats. China currently has a strange hold over indigenous Africans' hearts that no other country can match. China's One Belt, One Road program has resulted in Chinese infrastructure spending. Extend beyond these railways throughout the world, but this technique may only succeed in Africa because people in the West are unwilling to invest large sums of money on infrastructure. Even if China is prepared to supply it, Africa's current circumstance is different. China can supply jobs, educate trained employees, and make financial loans to Africa, which is exactly what the continent requires. 
What is clear is that China is now in the hearts of local Africans, which other nations cannot shake, and that if China's one road, one belt, one road collaboration continues throughout the world, the need in China will move farther abroad. On to the next project. This next project will wow you on what China is really doing in Africa. Project 2. China invests $1,000 million to build space launch site in Africa. Djibouti, which borders Somalia and Eritrea, aimed to deal with China that made the country happy. According to the research, the content of this agreement is that the two parties would invest $1 billion to establish a huge space launch facility in Djibouti, which will also be China's first space launch station funded in and developed in Africa. So we don't comprehend why China is constructing a new satellite launch facility in Africa. What function may this space launch location play? A space launch complex takes up a lot of room, and this one contains seven satellite launch pads and three test beds. To avoid slipping behind the rest of the world, Djibouti has set aside 10 square kilometers of territory for this purpose. Although China has the world's best infrastructure, the country's advancement in aerospace is second to none. However, establishing such a vast space rocket launch facility will present various obstacles for China. Several American aerospace experts estimate that the successful establishment of the space launch site will take at least five years. It is believed that the space launch site project is involved in the electronic manufacturing service business and the aerospace industry, but the most essential projects are satellite manufacture, satellite communication, satellite measurement and control, and satellite launch. Satellite manufacturing is the most crucial of them since it includes complicated supply networks and international trade ties. Because the infrastructure in two booties is insufficient to finish the project, China gives some support to the project as soon as feasible, such as contributing in the building of the port where the project is located and the construction of roadways. Furthermore, Djibouti and Chinese enterprises will collaborate on this project for up to 30 years. We all know that the closer the satellite is to the equator, the better the launch circumstances will be, which can ease some of the burden on the launch base. Once completed, the space launch site will not only enable China to achieve its space launch goal, but will it also propel Djibouti's space capabilities to the forefront of the globe. We all know that the country closest to the equator is Indonesia, so what advantage does Djibouti have to obtain Chinese investment? Djibouti is a tiny nation with a land area of 23,000 square kilometers and a population of only 9,557 people. Because the majority of its population is centered in Djibouti, Djibouti uses the capital's name as a national name. Djibouti appears to be a tiny country with limited locations for people to dwell. However, based on the social climate, natural characteristics, and international connections, Djibouti is an excellent candidate for a satellite launch site. First and foremost, Djibouti's social atmosphere and natural circumstances are excellent. For example, Djibouti's internal political climate is quite stable, and its domestic social security system is in good shape. Although Djibouti's economic level has grown slowly in recent years, no serious occurrences against the government have been reported. More crucially, Djiboutians are not permitted to own firearms. As a result, the criminal crime rate in Djibouti is quite low. Furthermore, Djibouti's geographic position is quite favorable, because it not only links the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, but also the famed Strait of Mandeb and the Arabian Peninsula, which are extremely close to Djibouti. The second reason is that Djibouti has an excellent connection with China. Djibouti has not only increased economic cooperation with China in recent years, but China has also assisted Djibouti in becoming a moderately rich society. China, for example, invested in the development of Djibouti's port as well as salt and chemical industrial parts and other projects. China even built certain parts of the railway successfully. Furthermore, Djibouti has joined Shine, his Belt and Road Initiative, and has built a positive cooperate connection with China in several areas. The third reason is that Djibouti port, being the multifunctional port with the most comprehensive facilities in Djibouti, has very favorable natural circumstances. Dohail multifunctional port not only efficiently completes freight transfer but also supplies satellites. Most notably, Djibouti is located near the equator. Although it is not as near to the equator as Indonesia, it is substantially closer than many other countries. Building a space launch station in Djibouti benefits more than only rocket launches. It can also save a lot of fuel during the rocket launch, allowing for a faster launch. Furthermore, when satellites are launched at the launch site, orbital fuel can be lowered. Furthermore, Djibouti's climate is savanna, and most of your booty land is dry and semi-arid, 
with minimal precipitation make it ideal for seeing space launches. If the space launch site project in Djibouti succeeds, the African continent will have its first space launch site and African satellites will no longer need to be launched from platforms in other continents. However, numerous Western countries have developed space launch sites in Africa. For example, France developed a space launch station in Algeria in 1940. But because the issues such as insufficient technology, the site was abandoned in 1967. In 1977 and 1978, Germany sought to construct a space launch station in the Congo. This space launch facility, however, was closed owing to political and economic concerns. Aside from Western countries attempting to construct space launch facilities on the African continent, various African governments have also conducted trials. Egypt, for example, originally developed a space launch station, but after multiple failed launches, owing to economic and other factors, the space launch site was closed down permanently. Furthermore, from 1982 to 1989, South Africa was one of the most economically developed African countries. They aimed to create an experimental space launch site in the Overberg area. However, the space launch site did not launch any rockets. The failures mentioned above have made African citizens very keen to have their own space launch station. Egypt, for example, originally developed a space launch station, but after multiple failed launches, owing to economic and other factors, the space launch site was closed down permanently. Today, the cooperation between China and Djibouti has reawakened Africa's desire for a space launch site. However, the space launch site is a purely commercial project, and as such, it is fraught with uncertainties and risks, particularly in the extremely difficult industry of space launch. Having been seeing the wonderful projects China is putting up in China, this next project will blow your mind. China spent $5.76 million to drill 200 water well in Rwanda. Rwanda used to be Africa's most underdeveloped and turbulent country. With the help of China, the country is now on its way to become the cleanest and safest in Africa. Some people compare Rwanda to Japan in Africa. When you go into a Rwandan city, there's no rubbish on the streets and the neat structures are quite lively. Rwanda is breathtakingly gorgeous, tranquil, and self-sufficient. It's incredible that some Americans have also relocated here. In a 2022 interview, Rwanda's president stated that China intends to help them. Rwanda has faced tremendous obstacles due to China's important help. This is a death trap, yet everyone in Rwanda understands that China has helped them prosper and resurrected them from the ashes, and Rwanda is now entering a new age. So how did Rwanda use China's power to rise? When the Nikrown pneumonia outbreak erupted in Rwanda in 2009, citizens were obliged to remain at home. Water is an essential resource in the fight against the disease. People with impairments such as the elderly must utilize contaminated water from marshes, which causes diarrhea and other ailments in the new crown pneumonia age. The pandemic had caused significant damage in Rwanda, and no country was ready to send personnel to incur risks for aid. As a result, Rwanda's president approached China at a vital juncture. He claimed that only China could assist them in resolving the drinking water situation. When the worldwide epidemic was serious, China gave assistance to 83 nations including Germany, Serbia, Iraq, Africa, France, and South Korea. President Kagame believes China would not deny the request in 2020. Therefore, China came to Rwanda, provided a medical team to treat them for free, and pledged to pay $5.7 million to drill 200 wells for Rwanda. The monies were fully provided by the Export-Import Bank of China, and repayments would be made after Rwanda's economy improves. The wells are located throughout 11 districts in the country's eastern and southern regions. There will be constant flow of clay water. Since the availability of well water in schools and hospitals, residents see clean water as some more valuable than gold. People no longer need to buy bottled water for emergencies since they have safe drinking water and enough water to clean with. All Rwandas now have access to clean water within 500 meters of their homes. And wells that have lasted at least 20 years, Rwanda's presidents have made significant contributions to the country. So, since Rwanda is short of water, why doesn't it dig its own wells? Rwanda is a landlocked nation located on the East African Plateau in Central and Eastern Africa with an average elevation of 1,600 meters. Their land area is 26,000 square kilometers, and their population is around 12.9 million. Rwanda, in reality, is located in Africa. In reality, Africa's subsurface water reserves are 100 times those of surface water. Even with substantial subsurface water supplies, many Africans face water scarcity. During the dry season, 
people must trek tens of kilometers with buckets on their heads to get water. Rwanda, in reality, is located in Africa. In reality, Africa's groundwater reserves are 100 times greater than its surface water reserves. Despite substantial groundwater supplies, many Africans continue to face water scarcity. During the dry season, people must trek tens of kilometers with buckets on their heads to get water. In reality, many Africans already drink from wells, and China's aid program includes well drilling. However, in regions where water is severely rare, such as Rwanda, no water is accessible. To begin with, digging wells to get water sources is incredibly challenging in locations where water is highly scarce. Rwanda has a lot of groundwater resources, but they aren't all the same. In some locations, the distance between water sources might be 400 meters, while digging technology in Rwanda is not as sophisticated as in other nations, surveying the subterranean water source is tough. As a result, individuals frequently have to go several kilometers to acquire clean water. But now that wells have been installed, they may drink pure water at any time. They may utilize the water to irrigate crops and energetically boost agriculture. They are really appreciative for China's aid. China not only dug wells in the area but also assisted in the development of infrastructural facilities and the construction of airport highways, which reduced traffic congestion in a rental province and supported the fast growth of Rwandan towns. Indeed, leaders are critical for country's progress, as Kagame has demonstrated since becoming Rwanda's president. He feels that the Western development paradigm isn't suitable for poor Rwanda, but the Chinese development model represents promise for Rwanda and even the country's overall ascent. As a result, after taking office, he began to actively cultivate diplomatic ties with China and learn from China. Take a look at collaboration. Rwanda, which views agriculture as the foundation of all economic activity, redistributes the country's land among farmers and welcomes agricultural specialists from China to assist. With China's assistance, when Rwanda's agricultural development steadied, Lock and Game decided to expand industrial, which needs great highways. In the instance of China supplying financing, Kagame signed a significant number of orders with China, allowing China to assist Rwanda with infrastructure projects such as China the Global Connection Highway developed by the firm, which has aided the growth of southern Rwanda. It used to take three hours for people to travel between the two regions, but today it only takes 40 minutes. To get there, China's infrastructure connected the roadways of numerous cities in Rwanda, allowing the economy to grow at full speed. Rwanda later upgraded their medical care education and public security with assistance of China, allow rural youngsters to attend school. Rwanda's development momentum in recent years has been particularly impressive in Africa. Rwanda's economy has expanded at a pace of more than 8% on a yearly basis. This rate has continued for more than 10 years, resulting in a miracle of Rwanda's economic progress. China's total exports to Rwanda will be $350.58 in 2021, up from $350.58 in 2020. A rise of 18.6% year-over-year, a drop of 24.9%. China's exports to Rwanda include equipment, electronic items, apparel, building materials, food, and so on. Chinese imports from Rwanda mostly consist of agricultural goods such as minerals, coffee, tea, shelly, and stevia, as well as animal items such as animal skins. China presently accords tariff-free treatment to 99% of Rwanda's exports to China in order to reimburse China once Rwanda discovers valuable resources such as ores and gives China precedence in purchasing them. It has been discovered that Rwanda lacks roads, bridges, and shelters while mining minerals, and China will assist. It might be to assist them in building infrastructure or to give low-interest loans. It is hardly an exaggeration to call it a miracle. Rwanda is clean and tidy at this time, especially its capital Kigali, which has a lovely environment, cleanliness, and high security, and is recognized as Africa's safest capital. It's so gorgeous that it'll leave you speechless in order to enhance the economy. The country is still learning from China. It has not only constructed a great amount of infrastructure, but it has also produced several tourism initiatives. China has saved the whole continent of Africa by installing a big number of water wells. We also hope that individuals in other regions of Africa may return to work as soon as possible. The last project will blow your mind. We left the best for the last. Project 4 China $80 billion hyperpower station mega project. There are many emerging nations in Africa. They're economically poor, but they have also been deficient in cutting edge technology for over 50 years. China has provided support to Africa. Roads, trains, ports, and bridges are created in emerging and impoverished countries. 
Africa, one of the world's places with the lowest levels of power, is attempting to tackle the electrical problem all at once. China is credited with building Africa's largest hydroelectric power project, which cost up to $80 billion. Overall, the problem will be rectified once the hydropower plant is fully functioning. The majority of Africa is an issue with power usage. How important is this hydroelectric infrastructure for Africa? What does it have to give China based on information from the International Energy Agency in Africa by the end of 2019? Before we continue, over half of the population lacks access to power. If you've not subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. To begin, it is estimated that 530 million Africans will still lack access to electricity by 2030. Africa is today one of the world's most power-starved regions, and as a result, the development of electric power resources has arisen as a critical practical issue for African nations to resolve the continent's electrical crisis in China. $80 billion was spent on building the world's biggest hydropower project. The hydropower station occupies the majority of the time in Africa. Africa is a typical tropical continent with high temperatures and heavy rainfall. The local river is ideal for construction since it never freezes during the year, allowing hydropower plants to generate electricity. These regions, particularly the Congo Nile and other rivers, hold fascinating hydropower gems the Congo Nile River or the longest rivers in the world respectively. The second largest river in the world is Congo River, for example. 60% of it is in the Democratic Republic of Congo with the entire length. Its water flow is massive, reaching over 460 kilometers. The Congo River's hydropower potential is projected to be 2.5 trillion kilowatt hours in total. Even though only 10% of it was made last year, and 50 trillion kilowatt hours should be produced. Regarding clean electricity, each year of persons can fully increase the hydropower potential of the Congo River. DRC Kongyo Kinshasa may both minimize the issue of excessive electricity use and export a large amount of electricity to other nations. Many big reverse heavy hydroelectric projects, including the world's largest hydropower plant, have been erected along the Congo River's banks, and a hydropower station surrounds the river. In reality, the hydropower station has been studied for more than 50 years. Phases 1 and 2 of the Inca hydropower station were completed in 1972 and placed into service in 1982 with the aid of Western nations. The third phase of the Anger hydropower state and project was postponed in the late 1990s. Apart from the hydropower plant being operating for a long period and the reservoir accumulating a lot of silt, the previously built structure suffered substantial damage. The effective storage capacity has dropped dramatically, and power generating efficiency is now less than 30% of what it was. To instantly restore the angry hydropower plant, the turbines in the McQueen must be fixed, as well as its completion. These processes are costly. In 2006, eight of the dams were unable to function, while the other eight were only partially operational in 2016. The Congolese government will restart the hydroelectric project as a whole in order to generate huge amounts of energy by halting the flow of water. The River Congo Chinese Partnership is one of the tenders that the Congo DR Congo government published in 2015. However, when the project is completed, fixing the power excess problem is required to help the continent of Africa, as balanced economic growth, electricity transmission across great distances is a critical channel in addition to China's enormous sea transmission dark technology. This is crucial. China is now working hard. The goal of HPC transmission engineering research is to achieve a maximum transmission distance of at least 6,000 kilometers. As previously stated, the transmission system has a capacity of 20 million kilowatt hours. Thus, there is a total of 40.1 million kilowatts of equipment placed in the angry conceal. At the moment, when China has codified, your power plant, China, and ours will all contribute to the endeavor to increase power transmission in Africa. It formalized its ties with the region by signing a contract. In addition, we provided them technical assistance. Therefore, the question is if you would participate in this project because China has laws. It is one of the world's most well-known countries in the world for its infrastructure construction. It has improved the situation of insufficient energy for local manufacturing and living by constructing the famed China Three Gorges Dam and a heating hydropower station. Ocean Company of the Three Gorges with China's involvement in the talks. The entire third phase of the plan, the hydropower station, operates more effectively would considerably reduce the amount of time necessary to build the hydropower station. It is widely assumed that the project would be completed in the year 2020. It was finished in its entirety. 
China has devoted enormous time, money, and energy in facilitating the building of hydropower stations in Africa. What advantages does China have over other countries? The overall construction cost of the angry hydropower plant is anticipated to be $8 billion, with the low dam idea of the third phase of the project. When it comes to the last stages of water storage and energy generation, it appears that a minimum of $8.5 billion is required. The construction of hydropower plants may result in enhanced economic advantages. Who do you believe will gain the most from this project? The project is being developed in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo will surely profit the most as a result. Furthermore, many other nations, including China, stand to gain from this, since the hydropower station project has now been given its formal start, and yes, it will be able to meet 70% of Africa's electrical needs through the genuine creation of Pi. Because our will will be substantially smaller than the limitations of available power demand, the great majority of electricity will be sent in relation to the rest of the globe. Long-distance power transmission is also possible, allowing it to be employed in countries ranging from Egypt to Nigeria. This hydroelectric project would enhance people's lives by producing extremely large advantages in terms of both the economy and the level of living in Africa, which is now the region that is the furthest behind the rest of the planet. The African people will see enormous change, but there is one aspect that should be highlighted in order to aid Africa at a minimum of $560 million every year. China invests in infrastructure projects such as ports, railroads, bridges, and a variety of other infrastructures across Africa. The question is, why is China willing to assist the countries of Africa? Currently, the African continent has around 60% of the world's total mineral reserves, which include valuable metals and stones other than gold and diamonds. However, additional scarce resources include uranium and manganese. China's ties with numerous African countries are improving. Lastly, as China's economy grows, it becomes more lucrative to participate in mining cooperation with them. Is China after any mineral resources in Africa for offering them assistance? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more future projects on China Mega Projects from our YouTube channel.